This is a great floor because, I mean, you really get the views. I love being in the space of the park. It's really fabulous. And then the view down Broadway, you gotta come, the view down Broadway is really spectacular. In some ways, I would hope the building is a kind of amplifier of the city around it. Because you're really in the city. I mean, you're really down in it. The Museum of Arts and Design is the new incarnation of what was the American Craft Museum. We were founded to really represent artists, makers, craftspeople, designers, who were not represented in other museums. Ooh, this is good. So this is good, this, this is good. You can get that. The museum came to the realization that we had outgrown the space on 53rd Street. We began looking at alternative sites in this city. Everyone knew that the Huntington Hartford Museum had been vacant for most of its life. Huntington Hartford was the heir to the A&P fortune. He decided to create a gallery uh, that would be devoted to his collection of art and he commissioned the architect Edward Durrell Stone to build him a building. Stone had kind of a very decorative, and some people thought it was kind of a fussy style. Architecture critics hated him and curiously had hardly any windows. And so it had a series of galleries that had no natural light. It did not succeed as a gallery. And from then on, it kind of limped along until the 1990s as basically an empty or quasi-empty building. As a museum, it didn't work because of the scale of the spaces. Such small spaces that you couldn't curate any kind of context for a show. We wanted to bring light into the building, to activate the building, to animate the building to the community. One of the primary challenges of the design was that the space was so precious that the act of architecture had to be very precise to serve the art, the space, to connect you back to the city. And so that act that we developed was basically the removal of architecture in some way. We took things away that impeded the flow of space and then we cut the building open. When Brad Clofield presented his design, I don't think they felt that there was going to be much controversy. However, uh, very quickly, a opposition movement arose. People said, that although this building may not be to the taste of modern style setters, that doesn't mean it should be torn down. They really were taking the building as an icon of a certain kind of modern architecture, and it became a poster child. Many people were not trying to defend it really on its qualities as a great work of architecture, but rather as a monument to a certain era that was worth preserving. To make a long story short, they lost. Woo. So you should come out. That's the iridescence. For the outside of the building, one of the primary goals was to preserve the monolith so that when you're up Broadway or, or across 59th, you see it as this single object. And so by developing this basically neutral color to the tile, the memory of what was here is maintained to a certain extent. The tile we developed changes from gold to purple to even some green casts, yellow casts. It really depends on the time of day and the quality of light. Each tile is glazed by hand. There are 23,000 tiles. When the Museum of Arts and Design opens at 2 Columbus Circle, the new amenities we will have, including an auditorium, a restaurant, classrooms, artist studios, I think really will communicate a completely new experience to people. And the collection will ground us in the past because it certainly pays homage to the past. The infamous lollipop columns are still here. I mean that, that no matter what the critics have said about them or we think about them or the new design does with them, they're still here and you discover them. We created a base with a translucent veil, so during the day you don't really see the lollipops, but at night when they're backlit, you'll get this silhouette, the kind of memory of the lollipops will emerge again. 
so much of this city is about wiping things out and creating new histories. But by keeping the scale and the form and the shape of the original building, I think that that tension between the old and the new and the kind of memory of the debate and the discussion and the kind of critical history of this building, the fact that it lives on, I think is a really, really wonderful thing.